Hey, everybody. Rex Bear Leak Project. How the heck are you? I have to hit the mute button here real quick and a couple other buttons before we get started. All right, here we go. So did you guys hear that the Antifa, it hasn't been officially labeled as a terrorist group yet, but a petition to the White House that required 100,000 signatures to um, essentially have the White House look at that group as a potential terrorist organization. Well, it got over 300,000 votes and it still hasn't happened yet. The White House does need to look at this petition now. So we'll see where that goes. But on November 4th, they are calling for nationwide protests, essentially anarchy. Are they going for a civil war? Are they going for a, how do I put it? Uh, artificial creation of martial law to cost the taxpayers, those that um, are a part of the system, lots of time and money and effort so that it'll be easier for them to cause mass chaos, maybe anarchy, their ultimate goal of bringing in a new government. And it's interesting how they use tactics that any other organization could be looked at as a terrorist organization, yet somehow they get away with it. They can actually even have camera crews follow them around during protests, smashing through windows. And then the peaceful protesters that are out there that are, you know, zombies half the time, not always, but half the time, the zombie ones, you know, they're out there peaceful protests and the cops go bust those guys. It's, it's very bizarre. Um, Heidi Vandenberg, the young Oracle is with us. She does very detailed Vedic charts that show certain dates and timelines and events that could unfold. And I also want to share with you out there something that I pulled from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, for those of you out there that are religious, for those of you out there that follow many of the, the scriptures in the Holy Bible and such, and you say that certain forms of using stars as a science is considered, I don't know, evil or, you know, satanic or whatever. So I just pulled uh, a few scriptures. These are Dead Sea Scrolls, and I just want to uh, share a couple of them with you real quick before we get started. Uh, there is a Dead Sea Scroll called a horoscope written in code. Wait a second. Did you say horoscope? Yeah, it's a horoscope. Dead Sea Scroll, ancient scriptures. How about Astronomical Enoch? A lot of people say, Rex, the only book that's real, and you need to read the book of Enoch. I've read several versions of the book of Enoch. There's also what's called a astronomical Enoch. And then there is a scripture, a Dead Sea Scroll called the phases of the moon. Then there's one called the calendar of the... And then we've got one right here called an Aramaic horoscope. So bada bing, bada bang. Just wanted to get that off the bat for anybody out there that might want to leave a silly comment. Heidi, it's great to have you on the show here at The Leak Project. How the heck are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Fantastic. How's everybody feeling right now? I'm watching the comments heavily, so just checking them out, seeing what's <laughs> going on. We hey. definitely have some intense transits with energy and stuff, so I'm feeling it, I guess. Are you feeling it, Rex, or do you not? You're, you're just great. You're always in a good mood, aren't you? No, I'm not. I get upset and frustrated just like everybody else. I just have different ways of venting that. Oftentimes, I'll, I'll write something down and then form, come up with a formula and put it out into the universe somehow to come up with a solution. But it's interesting because November 4th, obviously, uh, is it's a very important day. You know, that was the inauguration of President Barack Obama, November 4th. If you look at the history, there's a lot of history to that specific date. But you know what's frightening is, let me just read this to you first real quick, petitions.whitehouse.gov. Formally recognize Antifa as a terrorist organization. This was created August 17, 2017, and it needed 100,000 signatures. The goal, uh, by getting that many signatures, then this would be something that would uh, go to the White House. They would have to look at it. Well, it got 355,000 signatures, so three and a half times. Now, if you go to the Antifa website, it's called refusefascism.org. Go to the website, and it says November 4th, it begins. The Trump-Pence regime must go. 
Uh, we will gather in the streets and public squares of cities and towns across this country. At first, many thousands declaring that the whole regime is leg illegitimate and that we will not stop until our single demand is met. This nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. Well, you can obviously tell the people that are pushing this, the agenda that's pushing this is very mainstream. I mean, this should make everybody happy in the... Uh, the global operatives realm uh, that is a part of the system that just seems to push verbal vomit and flatulate out their mouth. You know, I mean, the flatulence is just spewing out of them as they come up with these ridiculous stories about what they feel is the, uh, you know, the globalist agenda versus maybe looking at yourself, uh, your own country before you take care of everybody else's country. But it's just bizarre. It's the way things work. The charts that you showed me, were very powerful, the November 4th chart. So you said, wow, this is, this is not good. So let's talk a little bit about that. Before we get into that, let me just share something. If you go to um, even PBS, which is supposed to be a public broadcasting company, they are attempting to debunk anything disturbing. It's completely mind manipulation. And the, the numbers here, let's get to the numbers now. Enough about the rant. What are you seeing? And we'll go from there. Okay, so, you know, my thing is obviously I like doing, you know, pers people and I'm really not somebody to do world events and do people that we don't know the times, but this we can, you can look at a, a, um, an astrology chart and you can look at the exact time, the day, how it's going to look overall as a, um, as a whole. You're also going to be able to see like how emotionally people are going to be. And I can tell you that it's, it's definitely probably, I mean, it couldn't be any more exact and perfect of craziness and how people are going to feel. So uh, November 4th is definitely one of those days. And I said this in multiple shows. I've done, you know, a lot of shows on your channel that talked about, you know, lots of Donald Trump shows, lots of them, you know, with his chart, his, what he's going to deal with some of the transit he some of the transit he has in his chart what he has to look forward to and not to look forward to and i mean you know everybody knows probably by now that has watched me and even me and jenny talk on my channel that um i have to, by the way just because my eyes are going all over the place i'm looking at two screens just so everybody knows my astrology charts on the right the screens on the left <laughs> so um i'm going to be going back and forth because there's a multitude of things that are happening. And I, I pulled Donald Trump's chart and these charts are very detailed. So, you know, to say there's charts within charts and I pulled specific transits um, that actually pull like these crazy, crazy transits that can happen to you. It's called it's your D8 chart. It's a divisional chart. It's the, it's, it's the chart that actually, I don't know how to say this, but it's the one that with the enemies. It's the one that can inflict lots of problems, sometimes even death, not death to him, but like he can even feel like death. It's a, it's one of the worst charts. And I pulled the transits to see when it could be triggered. So hold on. I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. Okay. We so just I, look at it. <laughs> so I'm going to just start it with showing because I can't go to my other screen until I look at Trump's transits, right? And I just because I have to, I pulled these. This takes like 30 minutes to pull these. And if you look on this day, these are trigger transits and when it's like really tough for him that activate in his chart. And he's the only person I can confidently say that we have his birth time, we have his birth certificate. It's advertised all over the place. Quite honestly, it's wonderful because no other. You know, nobody else puts their stuff out there like he did. So I totally <clears throat> am confident in everything that I say about him and what happens because we have his actual birth time. So if you look on the fourth, this is a big day. OK, it's sun is hitting his sun is government authority. Sun is strong in his chart. But this day it's aspecting his AK, his Atma Karka. OK, the AK in your chart is yourself. Okay, so the sun's influencing its planets, it's aspecting him, it's transiting his moon emotionally, it's hitting his D1 chart, that's his birth chart, it's hitting his D60 chart, his, 
end all tell all chart. It's hitting its D45. That's one of the big karmic charts. You have to look at this stuff. And then the D8 chart, the fifth house and the 11th house. Fifth house is politics. Okay. 11th house is groups, network circles. Also, the 12th house is hidden enemies. Okay. So this is all that it's aspected this day big time. Mercury, MK, um, Rossi aspect. That's Gemini astrology. Nobody knows what that is. I'm not even going to get into those details. If you want to know more, go to my channel, channel 27. You can see all kinds of interesting things over there. So a lot of people won't even understand what I'm saying, but long story short is look how many things are getting aspected on this day. 10th house, Mars, Mars is war. Emo like it's just a lot of stuff. Venus, Rahu, women. Remember, remember I said Venus women, because you know, it seems like a lot of this stuff is women based, right? The, the women's rights, women's this, women's that. So that's definitely GK is enemies. GK is the things that cause you problems. So in your chart, it's one of the significators of issues. It's aspecting Rahu. I mean, it couldn't be any more like this is his trigger transit. He's going to have a shitty day that day, just to say. And I mean, you can see this is a lot of stuff going on. I did from today until the end of the month because I did pull his, his Varshapal, which is his yearly chart. And I looked at his um, specific dates, like these sensitive dates in his chart. And November was highlighted a lot. And you can go over and see how many times that I said, how many times I said November, like around November 18th, November, you know, all those days, November 21st. I remember that was a big day, the 26th. And so this is, these are things that are going to just keep continuously going on for him. He's going to have, you know, some definitely some struggles. And it's nothing that he does, it's hidden enemies. And I'll show you why. This is his chart. This is Kala software um, that I use. This is the sidereal zodiac, okay? So I use the sidereal zodiac, which is about a sign behind regular tropical astrology. This is from India. This is not the normal astrology. This is using nakshatras, which is a sidereal based zodiac system. And I just saw Nicole, who <clears throat> I did YouTubes with her, did a show. And, you know, she said she uses tropical, um, tropical calculations. So if you just heard something from her, mine's going to sound different, even though she says she's the Vedic astrologer. Some Vedic astrologers use tropical um, calculations. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying this is sidereal zodiac. So, for instance, Jupiter is going into Libra, um, not Scorpio. Um, also, so let me show you something here. And Saturn is still in Scorpio, which is a big, big ordeal in Donald Trump's chart. You see his chart. He's a Leo ascendant. Luckily he stays a Leo ascendant. Your ascendant is your rising sign, your first house, the most important chart part of your chart. It's your first house. So he's got Mars and MAGA make America great again. First house, right? That's his first house, his whole big, big things. This is why like, and Leo is all about power and all about, um, you know, being in the limelight, using your creative self-expression. It's your fifth, it's your fifth house. Um, it's, it's the ruler of the fifth house. The fifth house is politics too. So a lot of people that have planets in, um, Leo, especially the nakshatra of Maga are definitely interested in politics. So I, I do a lot of people's charts from your, your channel and everybody has a lot of planets in Leo, lots of specific patterns why a lot of people are interested in it so if you go to his transits that day okay that specific day he's got rahu in his 12th house this is huge like this is really the 12th house is um, self-sacrifice, hospitals, jails, mysteries, hidden talents, imprisonment, expenses, losses, bed pleasure, foreign countries, um, imagination, hidden enemies, which is the big thing I think personally for him. Um, cause when I did, remember when we did the chart also of, um, we did the whole year when he became like the, the inauguration chart, the big thing was Venus and Mars conjunct in the 12th house. That was like the overall theme. And that's, you know, in the Venus, Mars, power struggles with women. That's all over the place. Hidden enemies were his big thing. And he already has Venus in his 12th house. So initially you would know 
he's got women in Sa Venus and Saturn and Pluto power struggles with women, no matter what in his life. I mean, it's just there and not saying that, you know, he can't overcome those things. It also works out really well for him with doing country business and m making money in foreign countries and foreign lands. But moral of the story is right now, Rahu, and let me read you what Rahu is, okay? Because Rahu and Ketu are very, very important. These are what, this is like the most important part of your chart in a way too, besides your first house. Wherever these two nodes are sitting, and if you know Western astrology, it's the North Node and South Node of the Moon, okay? So I'm gonna read you my notes on Rahu and Ketu just so you get a gist of what this is. I don't wanna miss something here. So, All right, I need to jump in real quick. It's important. Yeah. Somebody made a, a comment that I'm fake and this is fake news. So I would just like to know what your definition of real is. Malfunction. Malfunction. <laughs> fake news. Yeah. Fake news. Okay. You're fake news. One zero zero one zero zero one SOS. One okay. zero zero one zero zero one India stress. <laughs> so. Rahu is what you're here to learn this karmic lesson in your chart. This is where it sits. It's the shadow, secret behavior. Remember all these things, because when I go into talking about that day, what's going on? It's secret behaviors, passion, explosion, innovation, extreme gains, fame, unexpected events, transformation, chaos, separation, politics, entertainment, entrepreneurs, physicians, pharmacy, diplomat electrical things, computer, poison, drugs, addictions, obsessions, powers, foreign places and people. Breeze, sharp umbrella, hurting by speech, gambling, ir irreligious, uh, going abroad, impurities, kingdom, travel, reptile. And it's funny, we'll go in there. I'll talk about that later. But reptiles, um, emeralds. Reptilian overlord. <laughs> poison, kingdoms, women, it's women, depression, gathering, foreign things, foreign people, confusion, lack of concentration, emotional imbalances. So when people have like a conflicted moon with Rahu, they have emotional imbalances. They're like bipolar or they can be schizophrenic. It's just in their charts. Okay. So when you see Rahu, all that stuff, that chaos is going into his 12th house of hidden enemies and issues, hospitals, jails, prisons, like he's going to emotionally feel like it's not going to be fun. He's going to want to hide and he can't, you know, this is just, unfortunately he signed up for it, but you know, it's going to be rough for him. So that's the 12th house. Rahu's going into the 12th house. This is huge. Like this is all over the map. K2 is in his, that means K2 is in your sixth house enemies that you know of sixth house is in Capricorn. Capricorn's all about government and you know, it's all about so he'll have enemies that he knows of enemies will be all over the place. And then here's the thing. Saturn is right conjuncting his moon and K2 in right here. You see this in his fourth house. Saturn finally moves that day and is going into his fifth house. So I think it will be a little less in, uh, troublesome for him. That's going to be a little bit, but it's still so close where it doesn't matter. It's still going to affect him like emotionally. Mars in the second, that's, you know, aggression. He's going to get mad. You know, he could, he's got to be cautious. Like there's just all kinds of not fun things happening for him that day. Okay, that's just him. But let's go to the actual chart. So on this day, I pulled the chart for 12 a.m., 11-4-2017. And you see there's Rahu in Cancer in Aslacia. Okay, so Aslacia is the snake. It's the serpent. Okay, and I just went through my notes to find out all the details about Aslacia. And, you know, I know I talk about this a lot and I always tell you about Aslacia, but this is like a big factor because I, all the charts that I do of like the, the, you know, a lot of the liberal people, like the Clintons, the Podestas, all those people, Jenny and I do a lot of investigations on them and they all have these similar patterns in their chart and the similar, the similar patterns in their chart is this Aslacia. Okay. So Aslacia is, I'm going to read you some of this because I think Rex, you'll find this interesting too, because this is like just stuff that, you know, kind of relates to some of the ancient scripts that you always talk about. But so Aslacia is the snake, it's the serpent, you know, the symbol is the medical symbol. It's the cross with the snake around it. Um, 
It's literally the serpent. It's a fee. It's a lot. It has to do with females. It's the clinging star. It's um, coil serpent. It is. Hold on. I have so many notes here. It's just crazy. It's also just like it's bad energy where poisoning, hypnotizing, seducing, squeezing, destructing of the victim. So it's all about um, victims and problems with, you know, like if, if somebody has conflicted a slasha, it literally can be somebody that, you know, clings to somebody and poisons them. Or it can be, you know, somebody that does radical things for sure. It's also... Um, it has a lot of power. It's the star. There's a lot of power in this nakshatra. I've noticed like Hillary Clinton has her Mars and Mars and moon in this. There's a lot of those p politicians that have planets in Aslacia and Aslacia is the snake. Now, I'm not saying it's always bad like that because sometimes it does turn out nice. You know, sometimes it can make somebody very successful, make somebody an entrepreneur, make somebody famous, but Rahu there, you have to understand what did I just say? Rahu was all those crazy things. Rahu and Aslacia is, you know, just expanding all that snake serpent energy. Okay. So that's just, just showing you the overall gist of what's going to be happening. Then you have to look at the collective consciousness. The moon is in Aries will be in Aries that day. And the nakshatra of Barini, the, the nakshatra of Barini is about women bearing problems. Okay. It just so happens that it's about women. And it's one of the other darker nakshatras. It's the God of death. It's somebody that has a lot jealous people come out of this nakshatra. It's not always bad just to say that it's not always horrible, but a lot of the times it's, you know, it's dark. So emotionally, and, and it's going to be conjunct Uranus, Uranus conjunct the moon is extremes, you know, bipolar things. It's kind of just like Rahu. So there's a lot of this craziness going on in that, in that day, lots of extreme energy. I mean, definitely it's going to be an ugly day, ugly day for sure. There's no question. And Mars is in Hosta fights, Hosta is all about the hands and control. So when you have Mars there, it's going to be battles. People are going to be fighting. Um, what else? There's a lot going on that day, to be honest. And then Merc and then Saturn is in Mula. It's go. It's in Sagittarius, which is the sixth house from this day. Like in the, the sixth house is just. It's going to be an ugly day. So emotionally, everybody's going to feel it because you, if you look at it from the connect from the collective consciousness, I mean, it's going to be. A stressful day for everybody. So, you know, I don't want to sit here and sound so negative, but emotionally, probably everybody that day is going to be a little tense, to say the least. So I'm looking while you're talking through the Illuminati card deck, and I'm seeing if there is an Illuminati card that portrays this November 4th situation. Now, here's the deal. If there are good people out there that are protesting and, you know, they're a part of Antifa, I would really like to talk to him. And you know what? If there's people out there that really believe in it, come on the show. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'd love to hear the alternative version. I haven't found anything from what the media has shown that gives me any sense that you guys care about anybody except for yourselves because the media has shown people that claim to be Antifa, full on, you know, black gear, masks, everything, pushing grandma. I mean, it's this, at least what the media is showing is disturbing. So if, there's, if, they're, if they're truly pushing for something that's right and what they believe in, I'll be more than happy to give you an opportunity to explain why you feel that way. I haven't seen anything that's shown, like what you guys are saying that you're attempting to, you know, okay, anti-fascist group, yet you're using fascist tactics on something that, on people that aren't even really doing anything. So, so what's the deal? I mean, who is your real master? Who are you really bowing down to? Who is funding you? Where's the money coming from? And is it from people like George Soros? Is it from organizations that are connected? It is. It's, it's definitely funded from George Soros. If you well, watch I mean, one, one American News Network, you really should because they, I don't, and people have said, oh, that's, that's, in, you know, by the, that's funded too by this person and this person. But let me tell you, they are the ones that partner with Project um, Vertitas Vert or whatever, and they for sure call people out. This is the only news channel I watched during the election, which is why I supported Trump, not to mention I had his chart. So, you know, I could actually confidently say how he thinks and his intentions. So I will say that, you know, and all these haters here that are saying all this crazy stuff, you know, it's like, relax. Nobody, 
it's people just need to calm the hell down. That's one of the problems here. If you Jenny and I get into these topics all the time on my channel because she's really passionate about this stuff and it's getting ugly. Like it is really, really scary. I mean, people and they're turning each us against each other. You know, if you just read some of these comments, you know, you can see some of the lunatics that are here just watching. It's like, why are you watching then? Um, so it's, it's just really disheartening, but they got that's, you. that's the kind of brainwashing that or mind control that the people have done to us, you know? And that's the thing, the people that don't realize this and that don't get their heads out of the sand, that's the people that, that are the problems. You're part of the problem. You know, the people that feed into this bullshit. I'm just saying, it's my opinion. So <laughs> let me ask you a question. Yeah, you know, I, I was going to go on a little rant. <laughs> you better keep him up. I mean, that's why I like having you on the show. If you didn't have that energy level to you, you wouldn't be a regular guest on here. This is uh, the imposter card, the Illuminati New World Order 1993, 1994, approximately time frame. The Illuminati New World Order, the imposter card. Who does that look like, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, do you hear that little mosquito? There's a mosquito in your head. Gotcha. All right. Mosquitoes, wasps, Beelzebub, flies every time. You know, who, who does this look like? Heidi? Uh, it's like really fuzzy. I don't know why I can't see it. Hold on. Can you I'm see it now? Will you just look at it? Hold on, hold on. I got to put you over here. Will you just look at it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know who that looks like. It looks like a lot of those guys. <laughs> it really does. It looks like a lot of them. Okay. So maybe the, the March on Washington card, maybe they'll play this card soon. It seems like they certainly don't want this card being played. You know, this, those marches, like here's, it's, you know, it's, it's really sad because, you know, we can go into this and we say things and then we sound, you know, like we're being dividing or something and we're not. I mean, I know your intentions, Rex. I know my intentions. And the point is, you and I are both very open to multitude of things. You know, it's like we are not the people that just sit around and, you know, try to collect and make conflict in people's lives. If anything, we're trying to help people. So, you know, the point of this is how you can di divert this is don't participate. Don't feed into the nonsense, literally. And sometimes to ignore it is the best way, I think, because. You know, they're so they're my friends. I have friends that are going to go march at this thing, I'm sure, and go march around, which no, I don't wouldn't say they're friends, but they're acquaintances, people I know. And it's like if they're that if they're that strong and they feel that strong about it, let them at it. But, you know, it's not doing any any good. You know, I watched this news. It's all about this, you know, about this abortion stuff now. And it's like there's so many negative things. <clears throat> How about we talk about the fact that everybody that. How about that Anthony Weiner is in prison now? All this sex trafficking stuff is getting exploited and everything is coming to fruition. Why don't we talk about that stuff? How about the people that <clears throat> funded, you know, a lot of the Hillary stuff? They're all in trouble right now for sexually molesting a ton of girls. Like, and, you know, there's just so many sketchy things that nobody even talks about. And it really is, you know, it's disheartening. And then they want to go and march with, you know, vaginas on their heads. And it's just really disturbing to me because... I think a lot of the times it's just people's emotions getting ramped up because they don't have any hobbies. They don't have, they don't know what their life purpose is. And I think that's the thing. If you know your life purpose and you're happy in your own life, you don't, you won't care. The last thing you want to do is go march around and cause destruction if you're actually happy. So it kind of just shows you how many miserable people there are in this society, which is really sad, but you know, no, Heidi, why do you think that is what you just said? I mean, put it together. Is it because there's funding at one side of the protest? I mean, is it, is it, is it money? Well, yeah, obviously it's money. I think a lot of it's fake now, but I wouldn't have said that before I met you and Jenny and like did all the research on that kind of stuff because I personally really never knew about all that stuff. I didn't even know who the hell George Soros was, you know? So, and that's just me being honest. I don't pay attention to anything that's not going to affect my personal day and personal life. Like, it's just, it's not worth my time. I used to be like that. And then, you know, when I found astrology, it's, you just don't care anymore. So you don't even put your energy in that kind of nonsense because it's just, it's not worth your time, but money for sure. I think a lot of it's fake. I think a lot of people get, 
you know, persuaded. Now I think it's a lot of mind control, which obviously I didn't know about that so much before, but I don't watch TV. So I never would get controlled by minds. I couldn't, that would never happen to me because I don't watch TV. Like I'm, I'm a weird person and I watch what I want to watch. That's going to make my mind better and stronger, not watch like nonsense. That's going to, you know, <clears throat> get a rise out of me and get me pissed off. That makes me want to go, you know, rip people's necks off. Like it's just not going to happen anymore. Because if I did, I know I have the chart. If I did do that and I did go down that r- route and I didn't know what makes me happy, then I could go, I'd be joining some March too, but it probably wouldn't have been the Antifa one. You know, <laughs> it could have been, it could have been the alternative one. And I'm not that person. So I think there's, there's a lot of people that are just confused, you know, confused with, and they just see all this shit on the news. People that send stats and stuff to me on Donald Trump's stuff. I'm like, where are you getting that? You know, like do some research. They send me stuff that's from the mainstream media. You know, why don't we talk about some of the, the stuff that he has really done that's improving things? You know, it's just so negative. Everything's so negative. And if you didn't know astrology and you didn't know Donald Trump's chart, I could see why you wouldn't like him. I mean, it makes sense. Let me go directly to the website again. And this is the claims that Antifa is making right now. This is the claims that they're making. And if you look at the font, if you know anything about neurolinguistic programming, psychological conditioning, conversational hypnosis, etc., what they are doing is literally programming fear into anyone that clicks on their website. Uh, you go to the website, it's refusefascism.org. And at the very top, the banner in black and white and then red no, in the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. You scroll down just, just a little bit, and it talks about what they're going to do on November 4th, how they're going to get gathered in the streets, and you know what is it going to be like in L.A.? What is it going to be like in Chicago, San Francisco, Seattle? What is it going to be like in the very liberal areas that are more, uh, you know, more along the lines of they feel that the, anybody that even if they say they're Republican, even if they don't really fit that term, well, they're automatically looked at as the bad guy. I think it's, it's just like sports. It's like somebody that goes to, you know, I don't know, Alabama versus Alabama State or something like that. I don't know. I don't know enough about sports to come up with. I would use a term like um, <laughs> BYU and the University of Utah. How terrible is that? I don't know any sports teams that are, you know, compete. I don't watch enough of it. But you, you've got these, these, these splits where you've got, you know, the left and the right, and they don't even really come together about what's true. They're more stuck on a label. And it's, it's ridiculous. Like, let me go. That's mind control, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it is. It's mind control. It's creating patterns and it's creating labels to specifically. Yeah, I got that sucker. To, 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 no, I didn't. He's still there. My goodness. Get involved is what they're saying. Spread the slogans and the date far and wide. Where are they coming up with the money for these pamphlets and these brochures and these giant posters? Where, where's the money coming from? Distribute and publish the call for November 4th. Donate, raise funds. Use the indictments of the crimes of the Trump-Pence regime. What indictments? Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. This is where they freak you out even more, especially if you're a very easily manipulated, not very street smart, you know, like your, your savvy really isn't there yet. And it's not because of who you are, just because of where you are in life. You're just not there yet. So this is what it says. No. The nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. So this is what they say are nightmares. This is what they're saying the problem is right here. Back this up. This is what the problem is. It says, a nightmare. Immigrants living in terror, their next step could mean detention, deportation, being torn from children and loved ones. How, how many people are here illegally that are really fearing that right now? I would like to know, seriously. And hey, um, if that's the situation if you really fear that is it because of the trump administration or is it because of maybe the laws that are currently in place i don't know i mean i I, we are a nation of immigrants i mean how was the nation founded it was based on immigrants we came here from italy ireland scotland germany all over the place so you never want to fear that i get that i absolutely get it are you really fearing it because of trump are you fearing it because of what media is painting the picture as trump being the problem which is it which is exactly that, that that's let, me, let me go for just a little bit more if I can. Yeah, then, they say, then they say a nightmare Muslims and refugees demonized, banned, and cast out. Is that really true? Um, a, a nightmare millions of children 
the elderly, disabled, the sick, the poor, denied health care, food assistance, the very right to live. Oh, really? You want to back that one up? I think that one's BS all the way. A nightmare. Women objectified, degraded, and denied the basic right to control their own reproduction with fundamentalist Christian fascism increasingly being made law. Hmm, I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, a nightmare. LGBTQ people stigmatized, ostracized, and denied civil rights recently won. Hmm, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, a night, I mean, look, people can do what they want to do in America. I mean, my goodness, how many different genders are there now? Heidi, there's 37, 42. Who cares? I mean, I think that's a, a, a mute. People don't really care about that anymore. That's like the 1970s now. It's, it's, it's been there, done that. You know, I mean, people are moving on from that. So I don't think that's a nightmare. Do you really think that's a nightmare? Is there somebody out there that truly feels that's a nightmare if, if you are transgender? I mean, are you really scared? I'm seriously, if you are because of, I mean, it's very interesting. I, I doubt it. No, um, and I, there's nothing wrong with, like, I feel like it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it's now it's just, now people are like, I think just exposing it so much. Like my uncle was gay, died of AIDS. Okay. So I will say I have no, nothing against any, you know, gay person or, and if you say anything that sounds like, oh, you're not you stick up for Trump. People are like, you racist, blah, blah, blah. You hate. No, I mean, that's, it's ridiculous. That's, but that's how people are brainwashed. People live in a bubble like that they see on TV from the mainstream media and guys like what I, I hate to say it, but if you watch anything else, but the mainstream media, they, the people, and you can't sh like throw this stuff down people's throats. I mean, the majority of people, I would say, besides the people that watch your channel, that we're all in this kind of click together, you know, they're watching CNN. And if you watch CNN, I can see why you would not like Trump, you know, and why you would think Trump is racist. He's not racist at let all. Me, like, I don't know. Let me add to this. I'm sorry to interrupt. Let me add no, to this. This is OK. So now here's another one. A nightmare. Black and Latino people openly threatened by the president with maximum sentencing, stop and frisk going national, intensified police brutality and murder of our youth with no holds barred. Really? Really? Now you're going to label that on, on President Trump and his administration? Come on. Really? I mean, people, if people believe that, I mean, timeshare, timeshare, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's another one. A nightmare. The truth, lies and more lies, critical thinking being destroyed in education and public discourse. Um, it's been being destroyed for years. I mean, that's that's pretty true. I don't think that's uh, the current administration's fault. It's been being completely destroyed for years and the line that these guys are going on. That's more mind control and even worse, in my opinion. And I'm sure many listening to this podcast. Here's another one. I mean, even if you're a part of the organization, are you listening to your morals and values? Are you really listening to this? Do you truly believe this? Is this really what you believe? If I'll tell you what, I would rather have a conversation with somebody that was at least passionate about what they believed in. They weren't just doing it because they were being a good little lemming or zombified sheep or because of something that they heard on the internet or because something that the Communist News Network told them or because something they learned in a college class. Do some research yourself. Break outside of the box. Think for yourself. If you want to save yourself, you want to save the world, that's what you think you're doing with this? Think for yourself. Break outside of the board. Let me, let me just, here's another one. Here's another one. The, the, a nightmare, the whole planet in peril from a regime that denies global warming and sheds all environmental protections. Well, first of all, it's not just been this administration. It's been every administration before this one, and it's not getting any better, and things absolutely need to be done about the world. But to blame it all on the current administration, I think that's ridiculous. Now, you can get into the accord. Now, this is where they're using this. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to play devil's advocate as well. Where, where, how are they using that? Well, look at the accord that Donald Trump, President Trump did say, no, I'm not going to be a part of that. But have you actually read the accord? Have you read every single page? And do you know what they want to do? They want to cool the planet. And they also talk about stratospheric aerosol injections in that to cool the planet, to save the world. Let me ask you something, folks. If you cool the temperature or if, if, the, if the temperature increases by five, deg five degrees nanny, nanny, over the next 50 years, five degrees over the next 50 years, but there's still an atmosphere, there's still a stratosphere. Or let's say that you destroy 90% of the atmosphere and stratosphere based on aerosol injections, but you do cool the planet by five degrees, or you do keep it within just a, deg a degree higher than it is now. It's not even cooled yet. It's just a degree hotter than it is now, which is worse, Heidi. Yeah. Which is worse? What do you think is worse? 
Sorry, I was reading these comments. That's okay. Okay. What do you <laughs> think's worse? What do you think? I was reading I really something. My heart started racing a little bit. Oh God. What's worse, ladies and gentlemen, having 90% of the atmosphere, 95% of the atmosphere, or all of the atmosphere destroyed. Let's say 95% of the atmosphere is destroyed, yet temperatures are only two degrees warmer than they are now. Or you still have a solid, healthy stratosphere atmosphere, and the temperature raises five degrees globally. Which is worse, in your opinion? I think we want it. We don't. We want things to be, you know, steady. We don't want to destroy the atmosphere. Right? Correct. Exactly. You even if the degrees get five. Oh, yeah, I get it. It'll be five degrees warmer. And they're using this as, okay, well, because it's going to be five degrees warmer, the world's never seen such a thing, at least on the charts and the information that you have. But how do you know, you guys, those of you in the science communities, how much information do you have about the world, about how long it's been around? Do you really know, or do you just know based upon the scientific information that you have been given? That's very debatable, but I would say you probably don't know everything because every time we think we know everything, we have more to learn. But my point is, if it does get five degrees warmer over the next 50 years and the ice caps melt and you know, um, Antarctica turns into land mass. You know, you don't have the caps as much. It's fine. That will cause some serious issues. Yet, if the atmosphere is still there, if the stratosphere is still there, wouldn't that be better than having no atmosphere? Because if you have no atmosphere, if you have no stratosphere, then you would have just complete annihilation of radiation yeah. from the stars and the sun and everything else. I mean, you guys, I can tell you that even when you fly, when you go, I hate to fly. The last time I flew was in 2013. I flew to Anchorage, Alaska. The, um, the radiation levels increased from 0 0.07 on the ground to 4.2 in the air. That's microsieverts per hour, 4.2 microsieverts per hour from 0 0.07. So do the math. That's 60 times higher in the air. And imagine those of you that are pilots and flight attendants, et cetera. But where am I going with this? When you're in the atmosphere, when you're up that high, you are actually, you don't have as much protecting you from radiation, that's solar radiation. It's not like cesium isotopes, I hope not, or you know, plutonium or anything. But my point is, we need a stratosphere, we need an atmosphere. So when you read the Rhode Island Geoengineering Bill of 2017 that came out, um, I can't remember the congressman's name or the, uh, the person that presented the bill, there is evidence of 74% reduction of our stratosphere just over the past 10 years based upon this, these global cooling applications where they're attempting to block part of the sun to mimic a big volcano to cool the earth. So it's frightening indeed, and we really need to be careful how far we go down this road. But I don't know why I even got into this subject. Where were we going? No, oh, yeah. Good. No, no, yeah. I remember. No, like, we're talking about the nightmare. We're talking about the, the issues. Let me tell it's, you something, Rex. Remember you said the sun. I think we were on, I don't remember whose channel. We were doing one of our like big powwows or whatever. And we were talking about the sun. You were like, the sun's not even yellow anymore like it used to be. And I was like, well, I look at it and it's yellow, <laughs> right? And that's when it's rising. I notice now like when it, at night, you know, and I live in a place that it, I live in Maryland on the water. So you can really, you have some really nice sunsets and stuff, but I am noticing this like white stuff. Like the sun is white now in the afternoon for sure. So, you know, I've been noticing that. And I like, so I like when you talk about that stuff because it's stuff that I was not, like I never really paid attention to. I'm just, you know, living in my own, in my charts. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's kind of like when I hear that kind of stuff and, you know, just for instance, with Jay and, um, the guys that were on your channel that just did that whole um, the shooting thing in Vegas. I mean, they, 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 those two, that was a great show. I really like that. Jay it, and Jeff D'Souza. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, it's right here in front of my face. John, Jay and John. They, John, John really made some awesome mm -hmm. points. Jay did too. I really think like, you know, there's just. Sorry, so John. Sorry, well, there's so many things that people just dive into and just, you know, think that this is right, think that this is the way it is. And they, they don't know, like the people in the hospital, I watched them interviewing people. They don't even know, you know, they're just happy to be alive. It's, it's, it's just really like, not to ch I change the subject again, totally, but there's, there's so many things people just need to like, listen, I, my advice always is to listen to everything because you never know what you're going to learn. You know, I, there, if there's something I don't know about, I want to know about it. That's the best way. And you can't go into it with like, oh, my way is the right way, my way or the highway. You can't, you have, that's the problem. People have these egos. They don't want to get blasted because they don't want to feel like A, they've been lied to, B, they don't want to feel like they were wrong for all these years. 
But look, look at the facts. I mean, look at the facts about a lot of things. I mean, it's not just, you know, the president. It's like, look at the the mind control stuff. Look at what they're doing to us and our food. Look at all this shit. I mean, it's scary. It really is. And I never paid attention to it. And now I see all these different patterns and it's just really frightening. So you just have to be open to anything and know. And if you do listen to it and you're open to it and at least you know, trust me, you won't be as... You won't be as um, disappointed and you won't be as shocked when one day all this shit comes out. <laughs> that's how I look at it. Expect the worst. And then when, you know, and that's a little pessimistic, but like I am pessimistic. I, I look at facts. I don't, I don't believe anything in unless I have facts. So unless I see something happen in front of my face or I see it, I don't, I'm open about it until I have proof. And my proof can change if it's proven wrong, you know? So I always say that. Just everybody needs to be more open and just learn about things. The more you learn, the smarter you are, the happier you are, the better you are. Right on. Um, check your messages, if you will, real quick in the in the. Um, but you know, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought up the sun because it seems to me like um, when I do see the sun on the horizon, when the sun sets, sometimes it's just that beautiful yellow that I remember growing up, or that orange hue. But during the day, oftentimes it's got that real intense white. And I think personally, I think it, I don't think it's the sun. I think it's actually the, the stratosphere and the atmosphere. And as much of it has been depleted, that's why we see it the way that we do. So, um, but it, it definitely is interesting. And I'm glad you brought that up. So let's, let's go back to November 4th. Okay. Um, could it actually be, do you think that there could be some type of, event big enough that would cause, you know, something similar to this Vegas event or, but maybe not in that level, maybe some type of, I don't know, uh, planned protests that would shut down certain, I mean, certain industries or something like that. What do you see yes, happening? You I'm going to put you on the spot here and as much as I can, what do you see going down? What's going down? Well, I just pulled this card. The devil. Yep. The devil card. So, and I don't, I don't really use tarot. It's just for my own fun. Like just to see what it says, my intuition and, um, says, you know, anything's possible. You get people too upset. Jeez Louise, look what's going on. It's, you know, it's not just, um, but in the charts for sure. I mean, I've said this November, I said, just wait, you know, I said, yeah, June, July, but I mean, this is, this is ugly. And, you know, what John said, he was like, look, the fact that there's so much this miscommunication and there's so many, I feel like they, whatever happened, you know, with this whole Vegas shooting, that there's so, if you watch anything, nothing adds up. Like the story doesn't add, add up at all. The facts, the evidence doesn't add up. The, I mean, nothing about it. It's the biggest mess of confusion. I think that in any, there's no motives. There's no, then ISIS was in it. Then ISIS was out of it. Well, let's look at what ISIS is anyway. You know, you have to look at all these things. And I, I just think like they're going to, if this one doesn't work, you know, this one, it's all confusing. They got to plan something else, right? Whoever's planning it. Um, yes, I definitely think something else can happen. And I would advise people, like, I don't want to say don't go to concerts and stuff, but I can tell you this. My sister wanted me to go to something on October 6th. There was no shot I was going to it. Like there was... You couldn't put me, you couldn't pay for me front row seats at any concert, any type of event like that. I would never go. Like, I just wouldn't. It's, it's because it's too risky right now. It's too risky. Whether it's planned or not, it's dangerous. I mean, people are not sane. And it's not even just, you know, whatever happens if it's a big, like a big attack. I mean, people are losing their minds. That's kind of my point. If you go out anywhere and you don't say, if somebody starts talking about something that you just notice the energy is so tense, it's like, I don't know, but yes, I do. I do think something can happen for sure. Something can happen in October. Absolutely. Something, something can happen in November. Definitely. Yes. So, you know, I mean, listen to this now, let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen, just think about this from a, a little bit of a different perspective for one moment, if you haven't already, and you probably already have, you've probably already thought about this. Imagine what it would be like if there was an organization 
that put this kind of money and effort against, you know, during the Obama administration saying that the Obama, I mean, I'm just, I'm playing devil's advocate here. What if they were saying, oh, you know, President Obama and the administration is illegitimate and they shouldn't be in office and they're fascists. I mean, or, or use some kind of spin like that. Then they would probably be labeled as terrorists, right? I mean, and, and then they would probably be labeled as an enemy of the state. Um, it's like, what's up with the double standards here? This is what I don't understand, yet I do understand. I understand it. I know why they're doing it. It's just not, it's not balanced. You know, it's like, okay, do as we say, don't do as we do. We're, we're above you because you're just, you know, you're, you're a silly peon. You are a zombified sheeple that, you know, really need, you're like a mummified caterpillar. You're like, oh, yes, I will do it today. It's just, it's, I don't, I mean, listen to this. We will gather in the streets and public square of cities and towns across the country. I don't, I, I don't understand. It. The, the nightmare must end. The nightmare must end. It's a nightmare. Really? Can you go home? Can you go to the store? Can you turn on, you know, your television and watch a thousand channels of nothing on? I mean, can you pretty much do what you want to do? Is it really a nightmare? If this is a nightmare, I can think of plenty of places that you could go that you would just absolutely love it. I mean, because if this is such a nightmare, if you're that scared of, of where we're at right now, I mean, it's just disturbing. What about the people that really went through hell in Germany and the Soviet Union and even people, you know, back during the World War II when there were literally Japanese people and Italian people that were put in concentration camps in America? Yeah, Rex, you sound crazy right now. Ah, there's not, they got me. Yeah. How is it now? Now it's, it's fine. It's ah. fine. So how long was it crackling? Just a minute. 30 seconds, maybe. So what do you think about what I, what I just said? I, I think you're right. But I, I think that's, that's the perspective I look at things. Like, it could be way worse. We could be living in Syria and living in a war zone and, you know, worried about, like, if our home's going to get blown up and if our family's going to die. So I look at it from, you know, that perspective. Now, point is, I just, I have a very hot temper. So for me, I don't like to go out because I don't want to be tested and put myself in a bad situation. It's just like me being cautious and smart because I know, and this is how you can utilize astrology for a benefit. If you know everybody else is tense because of the emotions, you know, you just stop or you can you know, not react to their reactions. Like if I didn't do astrology and I was sitting here and I was doing this show, say I was doing it on something else and I was reading these comments before I knew astrology, you don't even want to know what I'd be saying right now. I'd probably be, you would, you would, we only would have done one show it would have been real simple. You know, that's, but that's my personality. So when you have some, something in your chart like that, or you have that kind of temper, you have to be aware of these things because you know, you could get thrown off balance. I mean, that man could have been thrown off balance. Who knows if that's even a real man and that's a real person or if he's sitting on a beach somewhere, like that astrology chart, like people are flying his chart around and I just have to say, where did we get this data? Like who put that in astrodatabase.com? You know, I, I just, I have to wonder there's, who got his time? Where I want to see his birth certificate. If we have his birth certificate with the time sitting on, you know, YouTube as a picture or on the, the shots, then I'll believe it. But until then, we don't know. They could have made it up because they see everybody's into astrology now. Who the hell knows? You know, I do believe, I know that the elite uses astrology, like it or not, they do. That's why you guys think it's bad and it's demonic. I can promise you every government official, every person that is um, probably pretty well off uses it. And they're not using the astrology that you're reading in the newspaper. And that's what most people that don't do their homework, that haven't done much, much research, they'll lay, link it to that. And I know that there's fundamentalists out there that, you know, really have fundamentalist values and you, they hear the term astrology. And even though it, everything's linked to the stars, ladies and gentlemen, as above, so below, I mean, even knowing the placement of the stars and positioning is so imperative because it's all a vibrational frequency. Everything breaks down into frequency. So when something is created, when inception takes place, depending on where the stars and things are lined up, that's all reflections of light. Even the radiation, the, the frequency level, it all breaks down to code. 
we are in a code matrix, whatever matrix you want to call it, whoever you want to call it. Some people refer to it and think it's Lucifer's matrix. Some people, you know, there's all a lot of people think this planet, this world that we're in right now, the the leader of the pack uh, of these organizations and these shadow factions, a lot of people feel is Lucifer, even the religious stuff. And then you could say, well, what is Lucifer? Who is Lucifer? Was it a fallen angel, extraterrestrial, anti um uh, um, what is it called? A non-biological entity that then became so self-aware and so powerful kind of describes the, the, uh, the archons and the Gnostic texts. And I mean, anyway, we could go on plenty of paths, but it certainly is fascinating when you do realize that these planets and the stars and the dates and the days and the hours and the, the positioning and everything is linked up with, with the stars. So to talk about what you do, the, the Vedic stuff, as being just a tool, it's kind of like science. I kind of feel it's more of a, you know, using some type of math and equations and algorithms versus just coming up with a, well, you know, am I, you know, I'm talking to my, um, I am talking to Zoltar Angustan and he says that you should move out of South Korea on September 23rd, 2018. Oh, wait, what just happened? I just, I just, uh, you know, it was, you know what I mean? So a lot of people will use that kind of, so I can see where people get upset by the charlatans out there, but you're not doing some type of, you know, fake invocation. And there is genuine invocation too. Don't get me wrong, but it's, I think it's pretty easy to pick out some of the charlatans out there that use a, a fake, uh, you know, sound. They start changing. They're like, no, uh, this is the beginning. Is it not? You ever met somebody? There's somebody I know in particular. Uh, I'm not going to say who it is because, but um <laughs> That they they will they will charge they charge big bucks to do these readings right, and this person this chick has these real bizarre eyes. It's like, mm -hmm. and and you you go meet her and you're like, okay, this is a strange person. But then if she if she channels the person or the being or the deity, she'll start off. This is the beginning, is it not? Yeah. And let me you know what? Let me make a comment on that, okay? Because of all these people sitting here saying like, oh. This is astrology is crazy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's just say this. I have a real profession. I sell homes, okay? I'm a real, I do real estate. Prior to that, I was a loan officer. I've always had a full-time career, which I still do, okay? I use astrology. I never believed in astrology, okay? Never. I didn't, I was a Virgo, okay? I would read Virgo and be like, yeah, I'm a hard worker, okay? I didn't know that you needed your birth time. And every 13 minutes, it changes something in your chart. I didn't know you have a rising sign, a moon sign, and your sun sign that you think you are is completely irrelevant. Your ascendant, which changes every two hours, is just why you need the time of birth. I do not. So when people say, oh, I'm an Aries, I'm a this, I'm a that. No, I'm an Aries moon per Western astrology. I'm not. I'm a Pisces moon. I can promise you, if you tell me your month, day, year, city, time, location, exact time, not a, oh, I think I was born at this time, the exact time, exact. I guarantee you, test me. I guarantee you, I will tell you so much stuff about your personality and about your life. You will be blown away. Trust me, I was blown away. When I found this, I didn't, I was like, well, how, what the hell is going on? I spent thousands of dollars on readings because I was like going through all this stuff in my life and I felt lost. And I promise you, astrology will help you because what it does is it literally, it's not the, like I'm reading some of these comments. Get a reading then and see, like get a reading, check it out for yourself and see. Somebody else said like, oh, I'll get, there's some five different readings from five different astrologers. Of course there are, because there's five different, there's thousands of different interpretations. Okay. So yeah, of course you can get 5,000 readings, five different readings. There's so many different parts of astrology. The people, the problem is people just think, oh, I just have this sun sign and this is everything about my life. Guess what? It's not. It's a little bit more complicated. There's houses. There's planets, there's aspects, there's divisional charts, there's nakshatras. There are so many different things that you need to open up your eyes before you sit here and make these comments. Because quite honestly, get a reading and let's see. Because I guarantee you, you will put that foot in your mouth if you get a reading. Because I did. I did. Like, I swear to God, I didn't believe any of this stuff. I thought it was hocus pocus nonsense. And I can tell you, I tested it on thousands of people for my own benefit. And I used it to control my life, who I wanted in my life, who I didn't want, how to forgive people, how to get over things, how to use transits to a great thing. It's not all negative. It's not like doom and gloom gypsy stuff where I'm sitting here behind a magic ball making predictions. 
It's literally numbers, data, calculations, and interpretations of planets. Nice. And you know I'm passionate oh, about wow. it. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. You know what? I'm so excited now. Do you know what I think we should do now for the second part of the show? What? <laughs> should, we some, should we do some readings? And, and, you. and you know what we should do? For those of you out there right now that are saying, you know what? I'm skeptical. Yeah, I want I don't to know. Do Maybe that, we should do a couple readings guy. for you guys. Let's do right Satanic now. Cat Lady. Let's do his chart right now. Like some of these jerks that are saying some of these rude comments. Let's do some of their birthdays. It'll be real fun. <laughs> Let's get you know, it'd going. be interesting, though, because you're going to kind of have a, a little bit of a. Uh, you'd have to do it like blindly. You'd have to get one of their, you know, because then they could say, well, this person, this person heard me talk bad about them. So that's why they said that. Or, you know what I mean? It'd be it'd be neat to do. Uh, like no, a, I'm not going to. The thing is, I would never. Well, I know say you won't. Thing. I know you won't. But they would use they, anything that they can use as an excuse to not, you know, to, to fit their paradigm and call you what they think is what, you know, th what they perceive you as, which is. I'm, I'm getting to the, it's getting kind of funny, Heidi. I was actually, the more I read through these comments, you can, you can classify, you can put about 70% of certain verbiage of what people say in a very small category. It's very easy to pick out the people and where, and you can take that comment and then you can pretty much understand a large part of who they are as a person, where they are in life, even even to the point of, you know, what their religious belief is oftentimes, yes. what, you know, how many times they pray, you can mm -hmm. really get a good understanding of somebody based on just the comments that they leave. And it's amazing how silly and how hilarious and how ignorant the, the rudest comments are. You know, right. if people leave a constructive critic, there's, there's always constructive criticism, which I respect. And yeah. I get fooled every single day. And I like that. I mean, uh, iron sharpens iron, still sharpens still. So that's a good thing. Yet when you just come out with your verbal vomit and your flatulence, well, you're, you're really projecting where you are in life and who you are as a person. And I think that a lot of those people five years down the road, 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, however much further in the future, a lot of those people I do feel will break out of that matrix and realize what they've been missing and realize how much more is available. It's interesting, Heidi, because from a personal standpoint, you know, I was raised Christian, Lutheran, et cetera, baptized, went to church on Sundays, you know, I had good experiences at the churches that I went to. My parents were never fundamentalist or anything like that. You know, we'd go to churches with blue jeans and, and just, you know, just regular shoes and stuff like that. So really cool. So never anything bad to say, but when I was in that paradigm, I was also stuck in that paradigm about thinking a lot of things were demonic or evil or antichrist, or it was a lot easier. It was a lot simpler. I'm like, Jesus will save us. God gave us Jesus and that's all we need to worry about. And we're going to be okay. It's all right. Yeah. You know I mean? That was kind of the mindset praying and, you know, giving thanks and stuff like that. But then when you break out of that, not only is it frightening at first, it's also, you feel like you lose a part of yourself Yeah. because you're like, wait, I'm, you know, this, this God that I've been worshiping and praying to, I wish my dog would be, hold on a second. No, I want to do this person. Nine twenty seventy. So, so yeah, just, just one yeah. second. So when you really kind of break out of that, paradigm and you start to learn at a very fast pace like it almost kind of reminds me of the singularity ray kurzweil talks about how once you get to a civilization status as you know you, you can produce radio frequencies within the next 200 years you're going to be at a you know a type one civilization where you're going to be manipulating matter like right in front of you just incredible type stuff so i think that when people start to break out of some of these paradigms some of these firewalls and shells they really they, they learn at a much faster pace. Spiritually, they evolve. And it's, it's fascinating. It's a scary ride, but it's also a fascinating ride. And you will find your true self. You will find God if you really want to find God, I feel. Yeah. And like, just so everybody knows, and I've said this, and then I get the, all the haters and say, oh, no, she's the devil or whatever. I was, I was a Christian my entire life. I went to Christian school, evangelist Christian school for all my years. Okay. I went, I mean, I watched... That was my life, okay? And if I never, I never heard once that astrology was bad, never. Which is why all these people that say that, it doesn't bother me. The only reason why it bothers me is because I have a career and I don't want when people Google my name, it to come up, oh, this devil worshiper. That's the only reason why it bothers me because other than that, I am so, I am so, I know it's right. Like you don't do thousands of charts 
and they're always right and not say that there's proof to this, you know, and the person that just gave me the birthday, this 92078, I need his city. This is the thing. You need your location. 920, 1978, need the location. 757. Did he put it in there? The truth seeker guy? You know what the one of the things about when you've got so many people in the audience, the chat's going quick. I didn't have a chance to see that oh, as I was, I was listening to you. God, I know I wanted to do this chart because he made some smart remarks that I was all like a lizard or something. I don't know what he said. <laughs> Hold on. He's just jealous. Not all reptiles are bad. All right. Hey, here's one. Do this one. Do this one. Yeah. 1223. Hold on. Let me just save this real quick and then we'll do the next one. It's got the number 23 in there. So, and keep in mind, this is literally me pulling this up on the fly. Okay. When you get a real reading from me, they're an hour long. It's literally a lot different. It's, it's a like a coaching session. I call it a life coaching for the people that get offended with religion. I'm, that's why I call myself a life coach because it has nothing to do. You know, that's why I do this. Um, this is the beginning. Is it not? Yes, you have good things in your future. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Give me the other one. Um, what is going on with my computer? She is dialed in. All right, you're dialed in, Heidi. Okay. And there's just like all kinds of things going on Here we right go. now. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. 12.23. Okay. At 12.03 a.m. So, ah, two 23s in a row there. That's pretty cool. 12.23 12 here. 12.03 a.m. What about the year? Oh, come on. You didn't put the year down. You that's silly. All right. Well, unbelievable. No. All right, let's okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to go somewhere else then. We'll get back to you. Here we go. Um yeah, here we go. 528. Okay. 1966. Mm -hmm. 1041 a.m. Salt Lake City, Utah. And if you guys want to get put at the top of the list, make sure to hit that super chat button. Make sure to support Leak Project and Heidi at Channel 27. Also go to the Channel 27 YouTube, hit the subscribe button. That is Heidi's YouTube channel. She does weekly shows with Jenny Moonstone. I call them the Young Oracles. I mean, very intelligent, very um, intuitive. And then you combine both. So it's awesome. They've also got great energy. So also, I want to point out that she is available at one of a kind by Heidi.org. Yes. Okay. So funny that, you know how we always, anytime we talk about a trend that, you know, there's usually a trend in the charts. So this individual is a cancer ascendant nakshatra of the Slesha. Okay. So you know, if you watch this whole show and you heard me talk about Aslacia, you know, th that's the negative part. Snaky. Okay. But I'm going to read you some of my notes on the positives because it's not all negative. Um, your ascendant is your first house. It's how people see you. It's how your life path goes. It's going to be, you know, just your, your, your body, what your purpose is. Um, it's the most important house in your chart, like I said. So when you're a cancer ascendant, you're, and people have a bad have misconceptions of cancer. Cancer is a water sign. Cancer is emotional, but it's like more irritable, more irritable emotion. Water signs, the Pisces are more like sappy. I'd say cancers are emotional, but they're more like irritable. Like you get annoyed easily. Um, and when your ascendants in the nakshatra of Aslesha, you are very goal oriented. You're always going to have your thoughts on, and you're going to be looking at the next thing. Like what's next? You're going to accomplish a goal, move on to the next. Like, this is just how your mindset goes. Um, definitely people that are good at, I, mean, I can't get into the whole chart because you can have a lot of going on in this chart. I'll say you've got a lot of planets in Taurus and Critica. So maybe some, you might have some things with money going on. You might work with money, financial anal um, analyst, um, but you're harsh. Like you might, um, I'd have to say Rahu, Mars, Sun, Mercury conjunct all together. That's like, Rahu is like everything I talked about today. You should watch it from the beginning. Mars is willpower, ego, you know, not ego, willpower. It's aggression. It's assertiveness. It's definitely like your strength. But when you have all these planets together, sun and Mercury, 
There can be some power struggles if you have any siblings or with your father or with power, authority, government, but it's very good for being very powerful. Like you would have made a great attorney. Okay. For sure. <clears throat> so very good at like getting your point across. Um, but it could be some issues with older siblings. If you have any siblings, um, or maybe younger siblings, just siblings or friends, networks, groups, circles, things like that. Moon's in Virgo. You're a perfectionist. Okay. So then your moon is in third house, all about communicative things and, you know, using your third house, hard work efforts. And you have your moon in Uttar Guni. You're very competitive. You're a perfectionist. You are definitely, you know, um, somebody that also might focus on relationships and karma. You're definitely like karma focused, I would say. And um, you may not have wanted kids or maybe if you do have kids, maybe there's a little like there could have been at some point of your life where there was a separation with kids or separation with feeling like, oh, my kids, you know, just sometimes with K2 and the fifth, it gives you some issues with your children. It can, this is where charts need to be analyzed. I'm just throwing things out there just to get a, so you get a little gist. Jupiter in the 12th, you also like spend money. I would say you're very like you you help people, you spend money easily. It also can give you more debt expenses because you are charitable and you pay for things for people. Um, like people that are interested in philanthropy and, um, you might be interested in foreign countries, foreign lands, foreign cultures, foreign things. You might like horses, equestrian, and you could just be a nurse. Like you, you really could. You could be in this could be something in the medical field too. So, or in pharmacy medical field. And I'm just gonna tell you about your transits because you're getting kind of blasted right now. <coughs> so <coughs> sorry, I've been talking a lot today. Rahu in the first big change is coming in your life right now. Big transformation. You are going to feel this a lot because you're a cancer ascendant. So you are going to have kind of a lot of things happening to you in your face real time. So you have to be, it can be a lot of opportunities, but <coughs> it comes with a price. So big changes and it's all, but it, I think it's going to do well. You don't have any planets in your first and seventh house. So it's probably really good. It's not a bad thing, um, but it's a lot of focus on you relationships and kind of big changes. Whatever's not supposed to be in your life will be removed. I can tell you that. And it could be something with health. You got to be careful with health things too. Could activate stuff like that. All right. Well, do we have another one? Yes. I'm going to look up Taylor Swift because somebody said, Hey, can you please do a reading for Taylor Swift? And I'm waiting on uh, another if anybody else that's um, kicked down the super chat would like their reading, please leave another message if I missed it. And if you did, and for some reason I miss you, please send me an email or hide an email and we'll take care of you. Thank you. So yeah, let's find out Taylor Swift. And while I'm finding that, why don't you just pick one out in the, <laughs> I know it's, I think it's, oh, I found that guy. He just put his, his time he in. Did. All right, there you go. You get, this is one of the, this is one of the, uh, the haters. This is one of the haters, ladies and gentlemen, one of the haters is leaving <laughs> their birthday oh this is great here we go what is it hialeah florida how do you spell it? the chat so fast shoot can you write that that city again please whoever there he is and I'm still trying to figure out, I mean, Taylor Swift, that, that's kind of a curveball. I, I was surprised. Here, we, the person that donated put her time in too. So we'll do hers. H-I-A-L-E. Okay. Oh, this would be you. Okay. So let's, this is going to be funny. So you have, you're a Pisces ascendant and the nakshatra of Revity which you will like my channel because my moon is in Revity. So Revity is an, is all about creativity. It's mystical, okay? Revity is about hum, like helping people and being, you are, even though you don't, you were sitting here like being kind of a hater, um, you definitely are like a helper and you're definitely somebody that really cares about people. You care about people actually too much where you could have been stomped on too by too, by too many people. 
You have K2 in the first house, just like me. Your problem is relationships. You have been, you, you have had all sorts of the wrong relationships. And if you're married and you, you know, you're, you might not be married. You might've been married a few times, but when you have K2 in the first house, you automatically are defensive because something happened to you early in childhood that made you feel like you didn't fit in. You're an outcast. Okay. This, I have this too. So just so you know, um, K2 in the first makes you feel like an alien. Like you dropped out of the sky. Like nobody else understands and can relate to you. You constantly feel like, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? What is my purpose in life? And literally you might have a multitude of things going on because you're always going to be searching and searching and searching. You know, that's kind of what happens. Even in relationships, this is what happens. Then you get into the wrong relationships with the wrong people. They throw flags, mess it up, you know, throw all kinds of obstacles in, in the way. And then you either move on, you could be unfaithful, you could, you know, something can happen with relationships. And then you're always kind of looking for what's next. Now, if that's not the case, and that can change. So it gets better with time. Um, I would say, but this is up until 40. So you're probably like getting out of that a little bit, but you know, it's issues with relationship relationships and you have definitely, there's power struggles. Like the relationships that you get into are Sun Ra who can jump people. So that's like, you know, some power struggles for sure. You also have Venus and Mars conjunct in the eighth, which makes you extremely like, can make you secretive, can make you have you want to know all the secrets it's also very artistic it's also that one hell of a detective like you would love astrology you would love anything like that you your truth seeker title fits you well venus and mars and uranus in the eighth house all conjunct is somebody that wants to know all the secrets um your passion so then you have moon in your second house in critica i would say you Critica is your harsh, the way you think and the way you can come off in way you are aggressive, your speech and the way you communicate is aggressive and people can cut, take it be, like you're being a jerk, but really you're just protecting them. And it's all because you're looking out for them. So, um, and that's all I'm going to tell you, but transits, let me just say that's enough for now, but K2 in the 11th, Saturn in the 9th, that's Okay. So you, you have Jupiter going into your eighth house. You are going to, um, this is good because it expands things. Um, it expands opportunities, but you have to make sure you don't spend too much money or get in trouble with a lawsuit or something like that, because it can do that. Um, it's not always bad, but it's sometimes it could be an inheritance. You could get an inheritance actually. So watch out for that, or that could be good. Um, then you've also had raw, maybe some health things were going up, some issues with work or your day-to-day -day work life health stuff. Now it's going into the fifth. You need to use your creativity, all about using your creative creativity because Rahu moving into your fifth house. The fifth house is intelligence, emotions, romance, children, speculation, luck, good luck. It's, it's, um, writing media, gambling, stock market. So, you know, this is a good time to, you know, this is, could be some good times to make some money and you're in a Rahu Dasha and this could be you know I would say also romance as well relationships but if there's anything that's not supposed to be in your life you're going to be getting rid of it too romance stuff if that's you know things that are going on All right. Do we have anybody else? Oh yeah. We have to do, I saw the one, the person that donated like a good amount here. Let me put hers in. You got the RN. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. I'd like to thank everybody also for being here. Thank you for joining us in the live chat room. Thank you. Moderators. I hope you're all enjoying the show thus far. Uh, not only have we had the opportunity during this podcast to talk about some interesting conspiracies and philosophy and spirituality and possible manipulation in the media, but it's also neat to get some of these Vedic approaches as well, because this information, one of the things that's neat about the Vedas 
Egypt is they go back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So this is ancient knowledge that has been refined and put into a very scientific modern approach that anybody can have access to on their computer. One thing that I think is quite a bit different though and makes it unique with what Heidi does is she's just done so many charts. I mean, once you've done, I mean, you've probably done 5,000 charts, haven't you? Yeah, for sure. So think about that. Somebody that's done this 5,000 times and enjoys it, like it just really truly appreciates doing it. Like you do this when you go out too, huh? I mean, this is- Oh something- yeah, like this is what, if you meet me, I promise you the first thing I'm gonna ask you is what time you're bored. I don't care if I know, like if you, if I'm to go on a date with me, or hang out with me for you got to know what time you're born. I won't even meet somebody unless I know what time they're born. Period. Okay. So wow, it's in- man. these people, you know what? I got to tell you real quick. I'm sorry, but I keep seeing these birth dates. Yeah. Freaking cool birth dates. I mean, the numerology, yeah. I've studied numerology for years. You guys have some awesome dates, man. That's cool. Bingo. Okay. Oh, bingo, bingo, bingo. So this person is, um, if one more person calls me a satanic cat lady, I swear to God. If you are scared of cats, by the way. You don't even have a cat, do you? No. And if you're scared of cats, just an FYI, you have a weak Mars. Okay. Well, I also got to tell you, though. <laughs> so why not I say? don't have a lot of cats because if you did, you would probably be filled with toxoplasma and under the mind control bug fungus that is literally taken over hundreds of millions of people around the world. Do you think I'm exaggerating, ladies and gentlemen? Look it up. Toxoplasma mind control. It's beautiful. <laughs> meow. Um, okay, so seeker of truth. Yeah, artistic. Just another thing too. That's the thing. With I gotta go back to you one more thing. With Revity, you're ascendant, you really like music big time. Like you relate to music and creativity art. So last thing I'm gonna say is you need to be using your artistic stuff or you'll you'll lose your mind so yeah i'll even put your art stuff on my on my site if you'd like so subscribe to my channel channel 27 okay first of all this okay the nurse interesting you have k2 in the first house as well okay you have k2 conjunct jupiter you are all about you know you're you're the leader you are definitely somebody that knows a lot of information natural detective it's in gemini it's in the nakshatra of Purnavasu, which is one of the most creative nakshatras. It's Jupiter in the first house is somebody you could have been really religious at some point, maybe in your life. And then you kind of, you know, go to just truth seeking. K2 conjunct Jupiter is really, really all about searching for the truth. Okay. This is like, and standing up for rights for children. You know, you could be somebody that's really interested in that kind of thing. Like how Jenny Moonstone is on my channel, just very fighting for children's rights you know, just maybe you work with children. If you're a nurse, you, you're a caretaker, you help people, you heal people. But K2 conjunct Jupiter though, is also just somebody that is going to lead somebody that's going to be in charge. People are going to look up to them. They know, they just know things, but your problem is relationships. You should listen to everything I just said, because with the other person, because K2 in the first house, you should watch all the shows on my channel too, because I have K2 in the first house. You just feel like you never fit in. And there's always going to be an alternative force. Like you're never going to have full support. So like if you're, you're a nurse, you're the best nurse, you'll have somebody that's like, Oh, that nurse is blah, blah, blah. It's like always giving some type of, some type of obstacle in your life, you know, with, with something. So you won't have always the full support. Um, Another thing I'm going to say is, your moon is in Revity, like mine too. Oh, that's so nice. You really should subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. Your moon's in Revity, same as before. Really like music, connect to music, healer, somebody that feel very intuitive. You're very intuitive. I mean, you we don't need we don't even need these charts to read people. We can read people. We don't even need charts. The charts just give us the proof. So moon in Revity, somebody that is likes music, likes to use their creativity, likes to help people, heal people. You know, it's just all about, and sometimes when your moon's in revity, you can get kind of knocked over too much because you're too nice. It's hard to let go. It's like the deepest water of spirituality, but like dancing, you might like, you love animals. I'm sure you love animals. Um, and it's somebody that's very caring and, you know, very good. So 
Yeah, definitely issues in the relationships, extremes. Like the per people that are, that are in relationships with just, just are kind of chaos. And then you are going to be going through. Okay, K2 and the eighth. Well, because I know you're a nurse, there could be some career changes. So you may just, you know, there could be, you might change work. You might have like a change in, I don't know, you know hospitals or an opportunity and it's not necessarily bad it's the eighth house eighth house but if you're working a hospital it's fine so and this is going to be a great time where you can make money rahu in the second money can come in to your savings accounts and yeah like that's and so if you've had any health issues lately that's going to loosen up a lot too that's going away so much and if you're not married and you're not in a relationship, then somebody could come into your relationship that's long-term. But if you are in a relationship and you are married, you might have some trials or some, you could get stronger, but it's gonna be tested. Saturn's going into your seventh house. Okay. Okay, great. And thank you very much for that. And also, this is uh, for Mr. G. Cool birthday, 11, 11, 58, 1, 23 a.m., West Branch, Michigan. Boom! Remember the 11, 11 phenomenon? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Everybody was seeing 11, 11. I see it all the time. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see 11 11, they say. It's like your spirit guides talking to you. It is. That's what I heard. I heard it was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, 11 11 58, 123 a.m., West Branch, Michigan. Okay, Leo Ascendant. Whoa, you've got lots of things going on here. Okay. All right. Leo ascendant and then so Leo's ascendants are, you know, I don't want to say it's somebody that it's all about using your creative self-expression. Sometimes Leo's can come out just a little ego egotistical, but they're really not. They're just, you know, they're just very creative and dynamic and, you know, they really need to be using their creative self-expression. So at some point you wanted to probably be in the limelight of something, you know, using your create creativity. Leo's need to be using your creativity. Now, if you're in the ascendant of Purval Falguni, so Purval Falguni is all about, um, it's kind of like the party animal of Leo. It's the hammock. It's somebody that wants to like lay, lay around and relax. They're really good at marketing and IT geniuses, people that want to make easy money. So, you know, sometimes people that come up with these great ideas like apps or, you know, I'm just giving examples. I'm not saying you've made an app, but it's somebody that makes something that creates something that can give res like resident, uh, residential income you know just something that resides always it's always coming in so rahu in the second in chitra that's great for finances and for money and for making money you're probably a really good salesperson you're really good at communicating selling things and speaking too as well and writing because you've got sun venus moon jupiter all conjunct in the third house so this is like a lot of energy but this is very 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 like Okay, so I got to read you about the Shaka though, because there's a lot of this in your chart. I feel like I've read your chart before. This looks really familiar. Okay, so with all this energy in the third house, the third house is courage, hard work. You're very competitive, extremely competitive. I mean, to an extreme. And when you have all those planets in this house, there could be some issues with siblings. Um, there's some short distance travel, TV journalism communication, competition, athletics, distance. It's like people that make smartphones. It's also you know, anything of any type of communication. So when you have all these planets in this nakshatra, this is literally the spiritual warrior part, nakshatra. So it's the potter's wheel, triumph arc. It's um, concentrate on goals and achieve them. So you are like, once again, extremely competitive. Um, and it's bringing change through new age electric storm marketing revolutionists, people that are really good at, you know, 
judge, <clears throat> judging like two parties and judging being good mediators and, um, you know, just don't give up until they achieve and get what they want. And, you know, standing, I would say it's in Libra. So you really want this balance, but you're probably, probably pretty unbalanced sometimes, you know, it can be that way. Um, and Mars in the 10th and Critica, once again, you know, Mars in the 10th is great. Like there's nothing you're not going to achieve. You're always going to achieve something. You're always going to be really good at business, um, I would say. And at Mars in the 10th gives you really good opportunities in your career. So, and you'll strive and like you'll, you will do whatever you need to do to get things done. So transits, okay, you're like Donald Trump. So you had big changes. You could have moved big changes in your life. Not like you were the president, but you know, big changes could have been great opportunities. They come with a price Ra, who's in the 12th. You got to watch out for hidden enemies. You're going to do a lot of cleaning house. You're going to do a lot of stuff with self-reflection and a lot of like getting rid of whatever's not supposed to be in your life. And it can be really good though for foreign countries, foreign lands. You might travel, you might go abroad, you might move, do just get interested in different cultures, different things. So I have time to do one more, Rex. Do you really? You can't do a few more. Um, been, I can I can you do like the ones that I've got on here? Yeah, then? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no so, more. Okay. Yeah, okay, no more. Because the ones that I sent you were all people that. Uh, oh, that, you put them in the chat. Okay. Yeah. So I put them in the chat there. If we could do those, that'd be. Yeah. Awesome. I'll make it up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to subscribe <laughs> channel 27 YouTube and also go to one of a kind by Heidi.org. One of the neat things about when you get um, a full reading, I think that's a better term for it, a full reading with Heidi is she'll spend like an hour sometimes. I mean, you spend sometimes even longer than that for a reading, don't you? And you get just, I mean, extremely detailed. You show them each house, what it means, what the functions are, the points, all aspects. So um, yeah. this is just, this is fascinating. Yeah. So, and I do webinars now. now. No, I don't go over. I had to get time limits on myself because I, I was just like losing track of time and, you know, I had to get, so it's an hour long reading usually as a session. I have two options. One can be um, a webinar, like a zoom, and then it records downloads to your computer. Obviously that one's going to be more expensive, but yes, I have that. And there is a four week wait from once you, and if you can't wait and you can't, you know, or if you can't afford it or whatever, and you just want to see if it's right, that's why I say subscribe to my channel because we do live readings, but you have to watch it to be live. And I don't do readings if I don't have people's times. Not anymore. Never. No more. Okay. Now, so let's do this one now. 11, 23. Okay. 84. Another 23 mm -hmm. in there. 11 and 11. How about that? 11, 23, 1984. Mm -hmm. The infamous 1984, the year 1984, 5, 15 a.m., Kalamazoo. Michigan? Am I as Michigan or is that Missouri? Michigan. Okay. Awesome. Okay. This is fun. This is good. All right. You are, <laughs> all right, your Libra ascendant in um, the nakshatra of Swati. Swati, it's so Libra's. Libras want, you know, peace and harmony, balance, and they tend to be very unbalanced, but you have Saturn in your first house. So you grew up fast, you're an old soul, lots of discipline, lots of responsibility in your life. You're just, you're, you might worry a lot, have a lot of fear, have a lot of worry about imbalances. And, you know, just when you have Saturn in your first house, it makes you definitely like go to work and take on a lot of responsibilities always. It's great because you'll look good. You're going to age well. It's great for longevity. It's great for um, you know, just those type of things, but you need to loosen up probably sometimes. Okay. That can be one of your things. Now you've got K2 sun, moon, and mercury all conjunct in Scorpio in your second house. That's extreme. Okay. Extreme things going on there in that second house. So I would say when you're growing up, lots of family issues. Okay. It could have been some family. Your second house is it's financial gains. It's family values, speech, food, early childhood, it's um, throat savings, right eye, it's loss or damage to worldly possessions, eyesight, domestic comfort, self-worth, finance, food industry, family business, banking, public speakers, singers, what you value, gems, jewelry, intake of food. So when you have all those planets there, 
there's some chaos and all that stuff that I just talked about. And it's in Scorpio. You're a Scorpio moon, just like me. You don't trust anybody. You don't, um, you're very passionate. You don't want to be lied to. All you want to know is the facts and watch my Scorpio series on my channel. That's what I suggest because you have a lot of planets in Scorpio and you're a good writer, very good at, you know, using your creativity and, and Rahu and the, okay. So there's some issues with money, finances, other people's money. It could be good and bad. Like money can come in, money can go out. Like it can be some ups and downs, you know, with that. And Jupiter and Venus conjunct. That's a very nice conjunction. Venus is artistic, stuff like that. Jupiter is um, expansion. It's the guru. It's in the third house. So, you know, you're probably very artistic and you might, you know, not people think when I say artistic, that means you have to go paint a picture, but it's not always that, you know, art is whatever creativity and artistic work you want to be. Like I say astrology is an art. So the third house is all about courage, hard work. So you have to work hard for these things. It's a house of improvement. So it gets better with time. And I promise you, you're probably, you've had a probably interesting few years to say the least, because you've had Saturn on the K2 and sun and all that second house stuff. Not easy with the finances, maybe some issues with finances or it could have been great, but there were a lot of responsibilities, lots of things you might've had to deal with. And you could have been like getting into some fights here and there. But great news, Jupiter is going into your first house and it's all opportunities. Opportunities are going to come into you. It was in your 12th house. So that's not so fun. I think expenses, a lot of solitude, isolation. Now Jupiter is going into your first house, expanding opportunities to you. This will be great. Saturn's leaving your second house, going into your third house, to your, this third house of creativity, hard work, work hard on all these creative things. You might move, you might, you know, focus a lot career could like take off if you're doing creative things. Now it could be takes off, but there's a lot of changes or a lot of things that happen. So that's all I have to say. All Why right. are you your head like that? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to, we're going to do a few more and ladies and gentlemen, bonus time. I am going to talk Heidi and do just a few more. She may not be able I to I really, I, detail. All right. So I have a reading. I can't, <laughs> I can't. Oh, I have, it's at 930, yeah. isn't it? Your reading is 930. Okay. Well, here, let's real quick. There's uh, Taylor Swift. You got her birth date. Give a quick one on hers because someone Taylor made Swift, a, when people don't like really, should we they, really, they kicked down. Yeah. They said they kicked down for it. So, okay. All right. All right. Um, so we have our time. Date, December 13th, 1989, 836 AM. And if for some reason we missed you folks this time, Heidi's a regular on the show. She's going to be on again next week. I mean, she might even be on in the next few days just because, Hey, she's fun to talk to. So um, we'll, we'll get to you. And uh, yeah, so let's go. Wait, let's, what was I'll her time? 1126. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the time is 836 AM. And what city was she born? Uh, Wyoming scene. Never heard of that before. W Y W Y O M I S S I N G. Thought it was Wyoming when I did the uh, copy and paste. Is that even Wyoming? Man, I mean Brampton. Where's Brampton? No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. So that's right, Franklin Square, New York. So okay, okay. There, there it is. It's a. Er, I knew that, ladies and gentlemen. I was just. Seeing if Heidi knew. She knew. Okay. She was born in New York. Yeah. But, you know, she is a clone. So she was probably. Uh, born okay. Let me say planet. something about her chart. I'm joking. Her chart? Okay. This is interesting because she's okay. <laughs> or she is a Sagittarius ascendant. I guarantee you she has long legs. Like, I don't know. You know how people. Okay. I don't watch TV. I don't watch music. I hate country music. So I don't like Taylor. Like I've never liked Taylor Swift songs. So I've never watched her perform. I don't watch TV. How could you say such? I know thing? she's pretty. Like she's cute, cute girl. She's thin. Sagittarius's uh, usually have really long legs, thin models, Sagittarius's. Okay. Saturn conjunct Mercury in the first house. That's 
there's a lot of like responsibility and issues. She is controlled. Okay. That's for sure. This she's got, it's so crazy because she is, she has the chart just like the elites. I mean, it's just so this never fails. Now she does have sun and Mars conjunct in Scorpio in the 12th house. So lots of hidden enemies. She could have issues with siblings, maybe brothers, possibly. Uh, I don't know if she has brothers, but there's issues with power, authority, struggles there. When she's mad, she's mad. Like she can be, I'd say, intense. And Mars and Sun conjunct in Scorpio in the 12th house. Like this kind of chart is kind of my chart Western way. It's funny. And, you know, she wants to know the truth. She has a lot of like, she probably would love astrology to say the least. And Moon and Jupiter in her seventh house. She has issues with relationships. She gets too emotionally attached to relationships and they end up being like extreme, you know, destructive type of things. And it's tough or they can be, a, you know, destru- addictive personalities or she might get emotionally attached to them or vice versa. And Venus conjunct Rahu. She's never going to be satisfied in relationships. She's always going to be searching. Venus conjunct Rahu is like, you're always looking for that that venus stuff now it's in capricorn you think so it's her boyfriend that left the the, the mess i'm joe <laughs> i don't know that'd be funny though yeah but never mind yeah could it be could anyway. it be yeah could it be that'd be pretty funny but moon and like she's if she's not this is where she's a great singer venus and rahu conjunct in cap but it's in capricorn so it's good it's like that's why she's got a good voice people are drawn to her it's it draw i mean if she didn't sing, she'd be a public speaker. She would be, you know, something like that. She's definitely meant to be in the limelight singing. And K2 in the eighth, she would, would love astrology, love research. She might have some financial hurdles up and down. Go ahead. One more. Okay. Just, yeah, real quick. We've got a couple minutes left. So thank you. And the last one, this is from all the way, Honolulu, Hawaii, January 15th. 1986, 1254 p.m., Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay. Stand by. Aries Ascendant. So you're definitely somebody that likes to... Aries are very aggressive, impulsive, and self-centered sometimes, but it's not always a bad thing. It's just you, well, you are, because you have Rahu in the first house. So you're here to focus on you. When you have the nodes, Rahu, K2 in your first and seventh house. So the people that I did earlier, they had K2 in the first house. You have Rahu, you have the opposite. So you're here to learn your life purpose and your self-purpose. So what happens is you might say, I might never want to get married, or you might attach yourself to marriages, jump in the, jump the gun, and then roll out real quick. You know, just make quick, impulsive decisions and make somebody very rebellious too. Um, Cause it's in the nakshatra of a swanee. That's somebody that jumps in, fights the fire, fights it, like just deals with things. You know, you just want to know, but has issues in relationships because Mars and K2 are conjunct in your seventh house. So actually what's kind of funny is your partnerships will be with partners like me. So Truth seekers can be a little like chaotic here and there, have issues in relationships, might roll. It's it's this balance and this bounce of Rahu and Ketu. It's you're here to learn how to have a balanced relationship and still find your life purpose. So you might get into a relationship with somebody because you think that's what it's going to help you. It's, it's the qualities that you're figuring out, you're trying to figure out on yourself. And then what will happen is that um, it'll be, it turns to chaos. So that's what I have to say about that. And I got to go, you have Saturn in the eighth, very good researcher. And I'm going to go with your transits real quick, just to tell you something. K2 in the 10th, they're going to be focused on your career and career changes and things are going to be happening in the next year and a half and maybe move your home life career. And Saturn's going into your ninth house. You might study more. You might take up some new beliefs. You might go long distance travel, higher knowledge, stuff like this and um go back to school get another degree who knows it's just things like that right on okay well thank you so much it was an honor have a wonderful night and uh we'll talk again soon thanks rex talk to you soon channel Channel 27 youtube also one of a kind by heidi.org subscribe now and be the change you want to see thanks thank you Bye.
And what happens because we have his actual birth time. So if you look on the fourth, this is a big day, okay? It's sun is hitting his, sun is government authority, sun is strong in his chart, but this day it's aspecting his AK, his Atma Karka, okay? The AK in your chart is yourself, okay? So the sun's influencing its planets, it's aspecting him, it's transiting his moon emotionally, it's hitting his D1 chart, that's his birth chart, it's hitting his D60 chart, his end all tell all chart it's hitting its d45 that's one of the big karmic charts you have to look at this stuff and then the d8 chart the fifth house and the 11th house fifth house is politics okay 11th house is groups network circles also the 12th house is hidden enemies okay so this is all that it's aspected this day big time mercury mk um rossi aspect that's gemini astrology nobody knows what that is i'm not even going to get into those details you want to know more go to my channel channel 27 you can see all kinds of interesting things over there so a lot of people won't even understand what i'm saying but long story short is look how many things are getting aspected on this day 10th house mars mars is war emo like it's just a lot of stuff venus rahu women remember remember i said venus women because you know it seems like a lot of this stuff is women based right the, the women's rights women's this women's that so that's definitely GK is enemies. GK is the things that cause you problems. So in your chart, it's one of the significators of issues. It's aspecting Rahu. I mean, it couldn't be any more like this is his trigger transit. He's going to have a shitty day that day, just to say. And I mean, you can see this is a lot of stuff going on. I did from today until the end of the month because I did pull his, his Varshapal, which is his yearly chart. And I looked at his um, specific dates, like these sensitive dates in his chart. And November was highlighted a lot. And you can go over and see how many times that I said, how many times I said November, like around November 18th. And signatures, so three and a half times. Now, if you go to the Antifa website, it's called refusefascism.org. Go to the website and it says November 4th, it begins. The Trump-Pence regime must go. Uh, we will gather in the streets and public squares of cities and towns across this country. At first, many thousands declaring that the whole regime is leg illegitimate and that we will not stop until our single demand is met. This nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. Well, you can obviously tell the people that are pushing this, the agenda that's pushing this is very mainstream. I mean, this should make everybody happy in the... Uh, the global operatives realm uh, that is a part of the system that just seems to push verbal vomit and flatulate out their mouth. You know, I mean, just, but flatulence is just spewing out of them as they come up with these ridiculous stories about what they feel is the, uh, you know, the globalist agenda versus maybe looking at yourself, uh, your own country before you take care of everybody else's country. But it's just bizarre. It's the way things work. The charts that you showed me, were very powerful, the November 4th chart. So you said, wow, this is, this is not good. So let's talk a little bit about that. Before we get into that, let me just share something. If you go to um, even PBS, which is supposed to be a public broadcasting company, they are attempting to debunk anything disturbing. It's completely mind manipulation. And the, the numbers here, let's get to the numbers now. Enough about the rant. What are you seeing? And we'll go from there. Okay. So, you know, my thing is obviously I like doing, you know, people and I'm really not somebody to do world events and do people that we don't know the times, but this, we can, you can look at a, a, um, an astrology chart and you can look at the exact time, the day, how it's going to look overall as a, um, as a whole, you're also going to be able to see like how emotionally people are going to be. And I can tell you that it's, it's definitely probably, I mean, it couldn't be any more exact and perfect of craziness and how people are going to feel. Hey, everybody. Rex Bear Leak Project. How the heck are you? I have to hit the mute button here real quick and a couple other buttons before we get started. All right, here we go. So did you guys hear that the Antifa it hasn't been officially labeled as a terrorist group yet, but a petition 
to the White House that required 100,000 signatures to um, essentially have the White House look at that group as a potential terrorist organization. Well, it got over 300,000 votes and it still hasn't happened yet. The White House does need to look at this petition now. So we'll see where that goes. But on November 4th, they are calling for nationwide protests, essentially anarchy. Are they going for a civil war? Are they going for a, how do I put it, uh, artificial creation of martial law to cost the taxpayers, those that um, are a part of the system, lots of time and money and effort so that it'll be easier for them to cause mass chaos, maybe anarchy, their ultimate goal of bringing in a new government. And it's interesting how they use tactics that any other organization could be looked at as a terrorist organization, yet somehow they get away with it. They can actually even have camera crews follow them around during protests, smashing through windows. And then the peaceful protesters that are out there that are, you know, zombies half the time, not always, but half the time, the zombie ones, you know, they're out there peaceful protests and the cops go bust those guys. It's, it's very bizarre. Um, Heidi Vandenberg, the young Oracle is with us. She does very detailed Vedic charts that show certain dates and timelines and events that could unfold. And I also want to share with you out there something that I pulled from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, for those of you out there that are religious, for those of you out there that follow many of the, the scriptures in the Holy Bible and such, and you say that certain forms of using stars as a science is considered... Yeah. So... November 4th is definitely one of those days. And I said this in multiple shows. I've done, you know, a lot of shows on your channel that talked about, you know, lots of Donald Trump shows, lots of them, you know, with his chart, his, what he's going to deal with, some of the transit he, some of the transit he has in his chart, what he has to look forward to and not to look forward to. And I mean, you know, everybody knows probably by now that has watched me and even me and Jenny talk on my channel that, um, I have, to, by the way, just because my eyes are going all over the place, I'm looking at two screens, just so everybody knows my astrology charts on the right, the screens on the left. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to be going back and forth because there's a multitude of things that are happening. And I, I pulled Donald Trump's chart and these charts are very detailed. So, you know, to say there's charts within charts and I pulled specific transits um, that actually pull like these crazy, crazy transits that can happen to you. It's called, it's your D8 chart. It's a divisional chart. It's the, it's, it's the chart that actually, I don't know how to say this, but it's the one that, with the enemies. It's the one that can inflict lots of problems, sometimes even death, not death to him, but like he can even feel like death. It's a, it's one of the worst charts. And I pulled the transits to see when it could be triggered. So hold on. I'm going to share my screen with you real quick. Okay. We so just I, look at it. <laughs> so I'm going to just start it with showing, because I can't go to my other screen until I look at Trump's transits, right? And I just, because I have to, I pull these. This takes like 30 minutes to pull these. And if you look on this day, these are trigger transits and when it's like really tough for him that activate in his chart. And he's the only person I can confidently say that we have his birth time. We have his birth certificate. It's advertised all over the place. Quite honestly, it's wonderful because no other, you know, nobody else puts their stuff out there like he did. So I totally <clears throat> am confident in everything that I say about him. I don't know, evil or, you know, satanic or whatever. So I just pulled uh, a few scriptures. These are Dead Sea Scrolls. And I just want to uh, share a couple of them with you real quick before we get started. Uh, there is a Dead Sea Scroll called a horoscope written in code. Wait a second. Did you say horoscope? Yeah, it's a horoscope. Dead Sea Scroll ancient scriptures. How about Astronomical Enoch? A lot of people say, Rex, the only book that's real, and you need to read the book of Enoch. I've read several versions of the book of Enoch. There's also what's called a Astronomical Enoch. And then there is a scripture, a Dead Sea Scroll called the Phases of the Moon. Then there's one called the Calendar of the... And then 
we've got one right here called an Aramaic horoscope. So bada bing, bada bang. Just wanted to get that off the bat for anybody out there that might want to leave a silly comment. Heidi, it's great to have you on the show here at The League Project. How the heck are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Fantastic. How's everybody feeling right now? I'm watching the comments heavily, so just checking them out, seeing what's <laughs> going on. We hey. definitely have some intense transits with energy and stuff, so I'm feeling it, I guess. Are you feeling it, Rex, or do you not? You're, you're just great. You're always in a good mood, aren't you? No, I'm not. I get upset and frustrated just like everybody else. I just have different ways of venting that. Oftentimes, I'll, I'll write something down and then form, come up with a formula and put it out into the universe somehow to come up with a solution. But it's interesting because November 4th, obviously, uh, is it's a very important day. You know, that was the inauguration of President Barack Obama, November 4th. If you look at the history, there's a lot of history to that specific date. But you know what's frightening? is let me just read this to you first real quick, petitions.whitehouse.gov, formally recognize Antifa as a terrorist organization. This was created August 17, 2017, and it needed 100,000 signatures. The goal, uh, by getting that many signatures, then this would be something that would uh, go to the White House. They would have to look at it. Well, it got 355,000.